How's it going everyone and welcome to another episode of uh, Louis Garage. Uh, today we are working on the Lotus Exige S. So um, at the moment what we've done is we've taken the drive shafts out um, from the rear and we're doing the CV boots and the grease inside the drive shaft. Um, now as a result of that something did happen and this sometimes does happen when you work on cars. You know you take things apart and you know sometimes you break things and sometimes things kind of go wrong. This is one of those times. So unfortunately, when we took the hub out and spun it around to get to the drive shaft, um, it actually damaged the boot of um, these ball joints down here because it, it comes very close. The, the upright here comes very close to the boot. And when you twist it around and when you rotate it and the boots are very thin from factory, um, it actually damaged the boot. Um, I'll show you on the other side. I've already done this one. Um, so today we're going to be changing the ball joint on the other side here. Alright, so this is the bad one that we're going to be changing today. Um, and as you can see there, the boot has split open. Um, and uh, there's going to be grease and all sorts of nasty stuff coming out of it. So it's a good chance um, to actually change it right now. Uh, and, you know, especially while we've got everything out and everything's accessible and really easy to, to, to get to. So what are you going to need for this job? Alright, well, the good news is there's actually a really nice tool that Elise Parts has created. I've just ordered this along with... Um, some replacement ball joints from Elise Parts. Uh, very high quality, very nice looking parts. The boot definitely seems a lot thicker than the uh, original boot, which is nice. Um, and so what you're going to need is the ball joint tool, the new ball joint, um, a 19mm impact socket. Um, you don't have to use impact, but I've got a little impact gun. Um, and, and, an, and an impact wrench as well. Um, uh, as well as uh, your normal ratchet as well. Um, so basically just a few tools. You don't really need much at all to do this job, which is fantastic. Uh, and I'll show you how to set this up as well. The, um, the little press tool that pushes the old ball joint out and also pushes the new ball joint back in. Um, so that's a really important tool to have in your arsenal. So the first thing we'll be doing is removing the 19mm nut on top of the ball joint. And I've just got my impact wrench on there. Um, we've got a new nut that comes with the ball joint anyway. Um, so we don't really need to be saving that one, uh, but just make sure that you don't round it so you can actually get it out. Um, so I'll be doing that right now. There you have it. Nice and easy. Um, what I'll do is I'll put the nut on there still, uh, because we'll be hammering um, this nut down uh, to get the ball joint separated from this upright. You can see it's, it's quite tight on there, so we need to do some hammering. So what I'll do is I'll connect it up to the suspension arm here, um, and then we'll ha hammer it um, from there. Alright, so we've connected the upright um, to the upper wishbone, and you know if you don't want to hammer it or if you want to save the ball joint, um, you can do this using a ball joint splitter, uh, which we already have, um, but I just can't be bothered. So we're just going to hit it, and it should pop out. Alright, let's see if that did it. There you go. Simple. See. Now the ball joint is out. See? Easy. Alright, now that the ball joint is out, you can see that it is pretty nasty in there. So I think it's definitely time to change this. Um, what at least part says is that we need to remove this boot completely from the ball joint. And I'm just going to use a screwdriver to do that. Just go around the whole boot and pry it off um, and then you should see a little lip on the inside of the ball joint which I'll show you soon as well once the boot is off. Right so you'll want to have a paper towel handy because there's quite a lot of grease um, in the ball joint and uh, you'll want to get as much of that boot off as possible so maybe even attack it with a knife or something um, and just cut around the edge of that boot. Um, I don't know about you guys but my ball joint seems pretty loose as well <laughs> so yeah like I said it's probably a good idea um, to replace these uh, and my car's only done 23 24,000 kilometers so yeah maybe the stock ones are not very good quality to be honest um, so what we'll do is uh, we'll set up the little press tool I'll show you how to do that um, and we'll be able to put that onto this little lip here on the inside um, and then press the old boot uh, pr sorry press the old ball joint out 
Right, so there are instructions that come with the ball joint tool, luckily, um, but I just want to show you visually exactly what you need to do as well, because the instructions can be a bit confusing. So, what I've done is I've set up this piece um, that has all these grooves and a small hole, um, and it, this side doesn't have the threads, right? So the bolts just simply go straight through um, on this plate here. And so the idea is you use your dowel and the dowel sits on the ball joint and the dowel sits perfectly also on the other side on this side of the tool. And then the other side you have also a little um, groove that sits into uh, the wishbone where the ball joint housing is. So then this side also has the threads um, and so the bolts actually thread into this side here. Uh, so basically that's what you want to be doing, you want to be setting up your ball, your ball joint tool, tool like this and then that ball joint sits in the middle there. Um, I'll show it to you um, when it's all on the ball joint as well. But yeah, that's the basic idea. So hold on, let me just show you again on the side. So you've got this side that has a small hole that pushes the dowel down onto the ball joint. And what creates the pressure is this piece here, this, this one with threads on the piece. And then that creates the pressure that allows you to push the dowel down into the ball joint and then the whole thing just comes comes straight through um, and it comes through this hole here, the ball joint comes through this hole so that's why you need the big hole down the bottom cool, I'll show it to you on the car as well alright, so this is what it looks like on the car so you've got the dowel in the middle there pressing into the ball joint um, you've got the small hole that pokes through at the top like that and then you've got the big hole down the bottom and that's where the ball joint is actually going to come out from right so now it's just a matter of turning until you get the ball joint up make sure everything's lined up properly obviously um, but now all you need to do is tighten your bolts at the top here and they recommend that you do about a half turn each side and then check it again and just make sure that everything's aligned properly as well Alright, so you can have a look through this hole as well and see where you're at and what your progress is. Um, and at this point, I can actually twist the whole thing around. So I think it's actually out enough that I can just pull out the tool and it should be able to just, the ball joint should just be able to fall out. So I'm going to pull the tool off and give it a go. There you have it. Ball joint removed. There you go, that's the old one. Not too hard, is it? Alright, there's the ball joint housing. Um, so just give that a really good clean. Um, doesn't really matter if it's not 100% clean, but you know, just make sure that it's not going to seize on in the future. Yeah, just use a wire brush. Make sure there's no damage in there or anything. It looks like mine's alright. Looks like there's a bit of corrosion in there, and then we'll be ready to put the new ball joint in. Sweet! So just put a little bit of rubber safe grease or lube around the outside of the boot, and that is just to ensure that when we push it through, that it's not going to get caught or snagged anywhere. Um, so just a little bit of grease on there, otherwise it will grip quite a bit. And then all we need to do is pop the ball joint in there. Slide it through and then get it in position as much as you can by hand uh, and then from then on we will use the um, ball joint pressing tool again uh, to install the new ball joint. Alright so how do we set up the tool for installation of the ball joint? It's pretty much just the opposite of how we uninstalled the original ball joint. Um, we are going to be having this small hole side on the bottom and that will just help to push against the new ball joint and push it up into um, the wishbone. Uh, we won't be using the dowel, so leave that aside, don't worry about that. Um, and then the big hole, the piece with the big hole, that is going to go at the top. So this is actually going to sit flush on top of the 
wishbone just like that um, and then we'll put the bottom piece with the two bolts down the bottom here and then we'll thread it through and it's going to push the ball joint in um, so I'll show you that in a second all right so we've got the whole setup um, ready to go you can see the new ball joint it's poking out because we haven't pushed it in um, there's a little hole here where you can compare where the ball joint is meant to be there we go where the ball joint is meant to be because uh, there's a little lip that the ball joint actually sits on this black thing is oops sorry this black thing is actually a little lip so the idea is we are meant to be getting this lip all the way up into there um, and then just make sure that this top bit is sitting flush with the wishbone and th make sure that this bottom bit you're not using the side with the grooves because if you use the side with the grooves there's not enough um, space for you to push all the, the whole ball joint back into the housing uh, so just use the flat bit um, and then you basically tighten from the bottom so instead of tightening from the top you tighten from the bottom um, and then that will enable the wishbone to sit flush with the housing Alright, just tighten it up as much as you can. You can see, like I said before, um, once the ball joint hits that little lip, then it's all pressed in. Cool, and then now it's just a matter of removing this tool, uh, and then it should be all good to go. And there you have it folks, thanks to this really really awesome and amazing and actually rather cheap tool from Elise Parts, uh, we have got the ball joint in in record time. Um, so I can't imagine doing this without this tool, it would be a real struggle. Um, even if you had something that was generic um, that you could potentially use, uh, you're just, you're just going to struggle finding the right sizes and everything. Um, so I think it's actually worthwhile to buy this tool. Um, it, was, it was really easy, it was really straightforward. Uh, and pretty much anyone can do this in their own garage um, so there's actually a total of eight ball joints on this car um, I think so yeah never mind let's not let's not say that um, so yeah give it a go if you need some new ball joints uh, hopefully this video was really helpful to you um, if you have any comments or any suggestions please let me know uh, I'll be bringing you a lot more content on the Lotus Exige S um, there's going to be a bunch of mods for this car as well that I've got on the way so you know stay tuned and hopefully you'll be able to see some of that new content soon all right catch you guys later and check out the new shiny ball joint looks fantastic right all right see you soon